Hello and welcome. I'm SAG AFTRA, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm SAG AFTRA Executive Vice President Ben Whitehair. Thank you all for joining us for another SAG AFTRA live stream on YouTube. To stay current with all of our live stream and video events, we invite you to subscribe to this channel, which you can even do right now. Today, as always, we are joined by two American Sign Language interpreters, Lindsay Gibbons and Mara Bassani Santa Maria. Lindsay and Mara will be switching off periodically throughout today's discussion. As a reminder, today's program is being recorded and you can watch the replay right here on sag After's YouTube channel or send the replay to a friend. Today, we present the PTEOE, President's Task Force on Education, Outreach and Engagement live stream, Getting In on the Acts, Legislative Advocacy. SAG-AFTRA plays a critical role as an advocate on entertainment and media industry issues in the United States and internationally. By working with the AFL-CIO, sister unions, other organizations, or even as the sole voice on behalf of members, the union helps protect and expand the rights of our members under local, state, and federal laws and regulations. We actually have an entire department the Government Affairs and Public Policy, GAP, department that develops and manages strategies to inform and influence public policy at city, state, federal, and international levels. And today, we'll get an overview of what they're currently working on and how we can get involved. Today's presenter is National Director, Government Affairs and Public Policy, Carrie Wood Einerston. She has been with sag after for 10 years having started working with the SAG National Board on the merger of SAG and AFTRA in 2011. In her current role, Carrie oversees government affairs for the union, where the focus is on state and federal issues affecting performers, including copyright and production incentives. Prior to SAG AFTRA, Carrie worked in both private and public sectors, including on Capitol Hill in Washington, DC. Carrie is a graduate of USC and lives in the San Francisco Bay Area. Thank you so much for being here, Carrie. Thank you, Ben. I'm so happy to be here. And thank you for highlighting our department and the issues that we work on. I'm excited to be here. Let's dive in. Let's, let's do it. I have a short little presentation for everyone here about our department, the GAP department. Um, and we're ready to go. So just a little bit about, about us. We are a small but mighty department. We work on local, state, and national levels um, on a nonpartisan basis. So we work uh, along both part with both parties um, at the federal level, at the state level, and even at the international level. And what, what we're doing is trying to protect the rights of our members and um, making sure that they uh, can work uh, safely and productively and, and um, we are a busy, busy department. Uh, let's, we're gonna start just talking about a few of the federal issues that we've been working on lately. The first one is the Performing Artist Tax Parity Act. This is a very important bill that we have on a bipartisan basis. Judy Chu of California and Vern Buchanan of Florida are the sponsors in the house. And we also, um, have a bill in the Senate, in the U.S. Senate, and that's with Mark Warner of Virginia and Bill Haggerty of Tennessee. We are very excited. This is the first time we've had this bill in both chambers of Congress. Um, basically, we are trying to update a, a, a very small portion of the tax code called the Qualified Performing Artist, QPA. The QPA um, was uh, put in by Ronald Reagan in the 80s, um, the problem is it hasn't been what they call indexed uh, for inflation or, or any, any kind of modernization. So right now it only applies to performing artists who make less than $16,000 a year to write off their agents and managers and hair and makeup fees. We want that increased to $100,000 a year, which would cover working class artists, middle class artists, and, and be with modern times. So we are working very hard on this bill. Um, I think it'll help a lot of our members uh, in terms of tax write-offs. Again, I said agents, managers, 
um, auditions, uh, hair and makeup, you know how much it costs just to get a job that you may not even get. So we are really, really working on this to get those deductions. Um, the second one is the American Music Fairness Act. This is um, a very important bill that we are working on. We're very excited we have it in both, again, uh, both chambers now. Um, Daryl Issa of California and um, Ted Deutsch of Florida are leading it in the House and excited to announce that Alex Padilla will be leading it in the Senate, in the Senate, and he's from California. Basically, this bill is just going to ensure that artists are fairly compensated when their music is played on the radio. There's an old loophole that exists that only pays they can they only have to pay the songwriter. Well, we want to see all artists paid when their music is played. So again, another bill we are trying to work on to get our members money in their pockets. Um, very important to make sure that these artists are paid when their songs are played on the radio. So the next one is the, the Crown Act, many of you may know, and that stands for creating a respectful and open world for natural hair. We would like to see this enacted on a federal basis. We were very excited this year when it passed the House of Representatives. Bonnie Watson Coleman of New Jersey, who we met with, um, has led the fight on that. We work closely with her office to do that. Cory Booker is leading it in the Senate, a tireless ad, both tireless advocates for this effort. Um, in all honesty, it's going to be harder to pass the Senate. Um, so we are working closely with Booker's office to see whatever we can do. We would like to, we know that our members need this for the sets. Um, basically it, it prohibits any kind of discrimination um, based on the, per, on the texture of a person's hair. And we know that in this business, we need people on set that can actually um, deal with all kinds of hair. Um, and the Crown Act would, would help us do that. So while this uh, sort of, you know, perhaps may stall in the U.S. Senate, we have seen it now enacted in several states. Um, aside from New York and California, it's in a handful of other states, which we are very, very happy that that's making some progress in the state level. And we will continue to work on it at the federal level as well. The next issue I want to talk about, which is one of our biggest federal issues, is that, and that is copyright. Copyright is so important for our members because it's just going to ensure that everyone is paid when their work is used. Um, we are fortunate that in DC, we work with a, a very um, passionate alliance called the Copyright Alliance. They do a lot of the lobbying for um, the entire coalition. Um, and we, uh, we want to make sure that, you know, creators of work are paid. Um, and that, that's sort of the bottom line. Um, and for us, um, our members made about $1.4 billion in residuals last year. And that's a direct correlation to copyright. So this is one of our biggest, uh, our biggest federal issues that we work on. Yeah, and here's some, just some brief numbers for all of you to see. The last um, international uh, sort of copyright number report came out and uh, for the year of 2019. And you can see, you can see here that uh, it's a huge amount of the US gross domestic product. Um, you know, copyright industries outpace the rest of the US economy. Um, 5.7 million workers in 2019. So, you know, it's one of our biggest priorities is protecting the use of our members' work and making sure that they're always compensated for it. Now we're gonna move on to the state level uh, issues that we've been working on. The first one is out of California, the LAW Act, stands for Let, Act, Let Artist Work, AB 437. Um, it is being sponsored by Ash Kalra out of San Jose. We have successfully passed through two committees in the California State Senate, the Labor Committee and the Judiciary Committee. We are headed towards the Appropriations Committee. And I just wanna give a little plug here to please all of the members in California, look out for communications from the union on this specific bill. We are going to need everybody behind this. Uh, we are gonna need you to call your state reps both Assembly and Senate, 
and ask them to please vote yes on AB 437. Basically what it's going to do is eliminate a lot of the outdated contract provisions that make, make it so that actors are held for as long as 18 months to one contract and aren't able to work other contracts. So we want to see our members have the freedom uh, to work um, and not be held to these, what they call exclusivity provisions for uh, very, very long periods of time. So we're working on this now in California. It's a very important issue. Again, look out for communications. Please you call your state reps, AB 437. We'd like to see it pass. It will go to up for a vote uh, in the next month and a half or so. State production incentives are, I would say, one of the biggest uh, priorities for us at the state level. We wanna see every state have a production uh, incentive program. It brings our members work. It brings work to the states. We work uh, across the country to make sure that these programs are funded, increased, extended. Um, and by the way, if your state doesn't have a, a production incentive program, we have helped through coalitions and such, create film offices, production incentive programs. One of the biggest successes we saw recently was out of Minnesota. Um, they now have a program in place. And um, that was, just the, we were part of a very successful coalition to do that. So we are always, we are always working hard to make sure that production incentives are remain intact and are increased just so that our members in each state have those opportunities to work. Broadcaster non-competes. This is a big issue in, in our broadcast for our broadcast members. Um, we oppose um, non-compete clauses basically across the board um, at every income level. Um, these agreements prohibit our broadcast members from moving freely between their media employers and in the markets in which they work. And we want to see our broadcasters be able to work where they would like um, without being held to these non-compete clauses, which only benefit the companies and not the worker. That's our short little presentation. There's a lot more issues that obviously we work on at the state and federal level that aren't in this. I just wanted to highlight a few of the bigger ones. Um, please, we would love everybody to get involved. Um, take action when you receive an email from SAG-AFTRA, as I mentioned, um, you know, share on social media, um, call your reps. Um, we are on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and also you're, you'll be getting emails, but we would love it if everyone could get involved in this department because we are a very small department and we need your help. We need your voices. Uh, and thank you very much. Thank you so much for highlighting this work and our department. Um, I'm thrilled to have, to have shared this information. Amazing. Carrie, I so appreciate you sharing all the things that SAG-AFTRA is up to. I actually interned for a congressional representative in DC uh, back in college. I was deciding if I wanted to go work on the Hill and be uh, in that world. And then I heard there was a shortage of actors in LA, so I headed West. Awesome. Uh, but the reason I bring this up is because you just shared the things that members can do, including sharing on social media, writing to the representatives. And as someone who was often the first line of defense, as it were, in a congressperson's office, I saw firsthand how much that made an impact. When yes. people are sharing on social media, writing in, I, I watched how that absolutely changed the actions and attention of the congressional office. So I just wanna reiterate, it's yes. not going into a void, it does matter. I find that my fellow SAG after members often say, what can I do? How can I help? And everything that you just said makes a huge difference. So thank you for that. Yes, absolutely. Whether um, it's a call or an yeah, email, right. I just wanna say it, there's nothing more powerful than a legislator hearing from their constituents. So whether it's in an email, it's a phone call, they are recorded and they do make a huge difference. So I would, we, we need to see those in the numbers you know, from our members. Yes, a hundred percent. So. Please, everybody watching, do that. Tell your friends. It does make a huge difference. You mentioned a number of uh, legislative 
bills and otherwise that that have a big impact on on our performers. Let's start with the Crown Act around basically equity and inclusion around not being discriminated against because of the texture of your hair. Um, what's happening with that at the state level? Uh, and is there any are there any other versions of the bill moving anywhere else in the country? Sure. Um, well, I just wanted to tell you, Ben, if, if you could, you know, there's several states where the Crown Act has been recently passed in, in 2021. Um, Illinois, Nebraska, Delaware, New Mexico, Connecticut, Maryland, um, New York and California both passed versions of it in 2019. Um, New Jersey, Virginia, Colorado, Washington. This is all amazing progress. So there's a handful, you know, a dozen states that now have the Crown Act. As I mentioned, we're working with Senator Booker's office out of New Jersey. He's leading the effort in the Senate. Um, and, and Watson Coleman also out of New Jersey did an amazing job in the house. And we were, we were honored to meet with her on our last trip to DC in April and President Drescher sat down with her and talked about the importance of, of this bill for our members. So, you know, we just wanna make sure that this applies to, she hadn't even realized that our industry, cause there's a greater, greater umbrella for the Crown Act. It, it deals with education and all forms of employment, right? But for the entertainment industry, um, they hadn't even looked at that angle. And the angle is, you know, for the sets to make sure that our members can all, you know, get their hair done by, by someone professional to do that type of hair. So that's really what we want to want to see happen. And we would love it to be enacted on the, on the federal level. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Pat Pa, Performing Artist Tax Parity Act. Uh, just this weekend, I heard Congresswoman Judy Chu talking about the incredible efforts that SAG-AFTRA, our president, Fran Drescher, and others have done to take the number of co-sponsors from 20 to 80, and that it's bipartisan. How soon could we see this passed? What are the possibilities? So the thing about PAPA is it's a very small bill, what they call it, what they refer to it as budget dust in DC. I mean, it's not going to make a huge impact on the federal budget. It's really just going to affect a small group of, you know, people, our people. Um, what they usually do with these type of bills, they put them into a larger package, so to speak, like uh, Trump did the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act in 2017. Um, giant, like, in other words, omnibus bills, right, that they put these in. So we're looking for a vehicle, so to speak, to put to make sure that PAPA is in. Um, Build Back Better was an option and that sort of is tabled. Um, we are looking for a large, um, a large bill to, to, to get that in. But I just wanna you know, say we've been working really hard on this. President Drescher has been tirelessly advocating for this. This is the first time we've had a bill, as I mentioned in both chambers, the House and the Senate, on a bipartisan basis, um, which is very important. So you know, once that vehicle exists, I don't see it being, uh, too much of a problem to get it in there. We just need to we just need to get the right, you know, the right financial bill out there. Got it. Got it. Um, makes me want to go back and watch how a bill becomes a law uh, <laughs> and remind myself of of that with catchy jingles. Uh, what are the next steps to getting the Law Act passed now that it's headed to the California Senate Appropriations Committee? What are what are the next steps from there? So from there, um, the Appropriations Committee is not going to do a hearing on it. So we are now uh, working um, to get to the chair and members of that committee to do our, our advocacy. Um, it will just be a strict vote. Um, as I mentioned, we did have two hearings recently in Senate Labor and Judiciary. We passed out of those with flying colors very successfully. Um, and after appropriations, we clear that hurdle. Um, it should go to the floor to the Senate floor and the House floor. And that's when, um, that's why we really need our members throughout the state to be calling their representatives so that they know AB 437 is important to actors and we need to vote yes on that. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Um, who could we contact if we know about legislation that we're interested in seeing sag after support? Well, me. Um, Jeff Bennett and I and, and Tara Kansari are the department. Um, I can provide my email address or, you know, however, but I, I certainly can take those calls and those emails. Got it. Got it. Um, we had a, um, have had some questions come in uh, for people who live and work in a state that doesn't have a film tax incentive or mm -hmm. perhaps 
one that's not very robust. Um, what steps can people in those locals take to make make that a reality? Bigger film, film and television tax incentives. So I mentioned Minnesota, Ben. I'm glad you brought this up. Really, it starts with the forming of a coalition. Um, I've seen this in several states. You know, we work with our sister unions pretty closely, the IATSC, the Teamsters, um, the directors, the state feds in those areas, whether it's a local labor council or the state federation of labor. Um, forming a coalition is really important. Starting to meet with legislators in the state as a group. You want union uh, so you want labor, you want the employer side as well. And, and you know, the employers are extremely supportive of, of films, of tax production incentives. It helps all of us. So I would say start with that, get, get a lot of voices in the room. Um, and that's what we did in Minnesota. And they got a program off the ground. And it's a tremendous, it's not a small feat. You know, it's, it's a very um, intense process, but it can be done and has been done many, many times. Um, and then in the states where they're already established, like California and New York, especially in Georgia, we basically work to just make sure those are continued, extended, and potentially increased if, if the time is right. What I, what I hear you saying in a lot of these really crucial and important laws, changing le legislation, tax law, is for us to embrace long-term patience and short-term repeated action and keep at it, writing in, sharing on social media, getting other people to write in. And the good news is that these simple actions really can make, make a big difference. Um, and, I, and I really appreciate hearing uh, all the different things that sag After is up to on behalf of all of us performers. I know that it these are the kinds of things that make a really big difference in our daily lives. So I appreciate the work that you and the staff and other members are, are doing in all of this. Um, Carrie, thank you for being here, answering our questions. As a reminder to everyone watching, this presentation is available as a replay on our YouTube channel. You can watch them anytime, send a link. People say, hey, what's going on? What's happening with these different laws? You can send them this video. And on behalf of the whole team here at SAG-AFTRA, we would like to thank you for watching. And Carrie, thank you again for, for joining us today. Thank you all so much. Thank you. S special thanks to our regular viewers who've been tuning in each week to these robust and delightful PTEOE, President's Task Force on Education, Outreach, and Engagement live streams. If you have ideas for topics you would like to see us cover, you can shoot an email over to PTEOE at sagafter.org. And before we go, if you haven't already, please subscribe to SAG AFTRA's YouTube channel. Get updates to all the content we're posting so you can stay up to date, informed, know what's happening with your union and be able to get involved. And with that, thank you everyone and have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time.